For the clay project, I would like for you to create a piece that is connected to your own cultural background. For me, this was looking at issues in the Native American culture since my father is Native American. Although I didn't grow up completely immersed in the culture, it's always been a strong aspect of my identity. My older brother attended Haskell Indian College in Kansas and met his wife Bertha, who was Ogallala Sioux, and he lives on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in North Dakota. A Native American issue I wanted to focus on in this clay project is the murdered and missing indigenous women movement, which is to bring awareness and action in one of the largest causes of death for Native American females. The information on these slides comes from the Native Women's Wilderness, which encourages Native women to connect with wilderness for a healthy lifestyle. I looked at a variety of art inspired by the MMIW movement, including the Red Dress Project and a more current COVID-related online art show that created a variety of masks that Native Americans created as a response to the pandemic. I found the use of the symbol from the MMIW movement really striking, and that's where the idea for my own project began. I'm going to create a clay female face and use the MMIW hand symbol. There is a lot of text on these pages, and I know I'm moving too fast to read it, but you can pause to read or come back later. To begin, I'm going to make a newspaper form, also called a hump mold, to hold the shape of the face. I just used newspaper and tape to create this form. As a reminder, this is air dried clay, so it does not need to be wedged since it won't be fired. I'm using a short piece of PVC pipe as a rolling pin. Draping the clay slab over the form, I cut out triangles to remove some of the extra clay. I'm blending with some force to make sure that my clay will not come apart when it dries. You can also slip and score as you blend. After the basic face shape is made, I press in a space for the eyes. Keep in mind the proportions of the face, eyes right around the midpoint. Next, I rolled out a small piece of clay for the nose. I added small pieces of clay on either side of the nose for the nostrils, then blended those at the tip with a little additional clay. For the lips, I rolled out two small coils with the top lip slightly narrower than the bottom lip. I took a divot out of the top coil for that dip under the nostrils. I blended downwards, leaving the bottom of the coil unblended so it will form the lip line. I added the bottom lip, then blended from the bottom only, leaving the middle line more defined. I added a ball of clay to define the chin, then blended the lower half of the face. For the eyes, I created two same sized balls of clay. I want the eyes closed, so I added those the same way that I did the lips, blending only at the top and then cutting straight across 
at the bottom for the lid. I added a small coil underneath for the bottom lid. I rolled two coils to define the upper eyebrow ridge and then blended that both above and below. I added clay to define the cheekbones. To create hair, I rolled out a thinner slab, then cut it into strips. These are blended somewhat to the face, but I left the edges to define the way that hair hangs across the face and head. I used a paintbrush and water to smooth the skin. I let the clay dry for about 12 hours. The weather is fairly damp and cold and this clay piece will probably take a couple of days to dry completely. Now that it's leather hard, I can create texture using several tools. I used a dry paintbrush to brush away crumbs. Using a sponge as well as a paintbrush, I smooth the skin so there's a nice contrast between the face and hair. Now I can let this dry for a few days before I paint.